put, when you're going through customs, what do you put as your occupation title? Well, I don't describe myself as an advocate of the adult services industry. Um, I don't do that by way of shame, mm. um, but there are just too many words to put there. Um, so I, um, I write words like agitator to describe my, um, my vocation. My <laughs> that thought. must go down well at the other end of countries. Um, it, it's, it's <laughs> oh, great, not, we've got an agitator coming through. It, it's not something that's caused me any difficulty at any other end, but you've cautioned me. Um, maybe I need to reconsider uh, the appropriateness of this. <laughs> but I know you do lots of different things, but you are the, is it the representative for the Australian Brothels Association? Is that right or I googled incorrectly? There's a professional industry association, the Australian Adult Entertainment Industry, mm -hmm. an incorporated body, and the members of that Professional Industry Association are the owners of lawful brothels and lawful escort agencies. It was an organisation or an association that was established um, some nearly 15 years ago. Mm. It started in Victoria where there was concern that the halcyon days, the licence to print money um, had died. Owners of um, brothels came to me and said um, the legislation that set up brothels and uh, escort agencies in Victoria was a bold social experiment, but it's failed any measure that you put in place, um, the UC that it's failed. Um, they wanted me to agitate, there's the word agitate, they wanted love me it, to agitate it, yes. for, uh, for change. Um, and I drew on my background of um, more than a quarter of a century of working with um, federal parliamentarians, so I had some empathy, some expertise in terms of um, dealing with the government and dealing with the bureaucracy, and so I uh, brought these skills as an agitator, as an advocate, to the um, Adult Industry Association. Right, okay. So um, so you're kind of the man that goes into bat for brothel owners amongst, as I said, other things that you do. Um, well, brothel owners come from a wide range of backgrounds. Well, this is what I'm interested there are, in. There are ex-police officers, school teachers, bank managers, uh, nurses, a dentist, um, a florist. Oh, um, I love this. Um, a persons who um, saw an opportunity to um, diverse to go into one to another industry when the lawful industry was established. And so this wide range of persons makes up the ownership of the, uh, the brothel and escort agency industry. But there's a bit of a stigma attached to, uh, to owning a brothel or to yeah, brothels full stop. there is. And a number of these persons, these owners, um, don't really want to take a, a uh, flying hope, high profile in terms of um, being uh, the owner of. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and they uh, they steer clear of the media, um, and they don't necessarily want to be seen to be lobbying parliamentarians. So they've engaged me to do that work on their behalf. Sure. Okay, I get it. Why? I mean, you know, and maybe you can think of one example of, for instance, you know. I, I, I'm, I've spent half my life being a florist. I need a, ch a bit of a sea, sea change career-wise. Why would you go into, what would be the draw card of going, I want to open a brothel, especially when, as you said, it's not exactly something that you kind of plonk yourself down at a dinner party and say, oh yes, I own a brothel, that's not going to be constantly, I guess, uh, received with. That's the disappointing part about it, that you and should And you have be to understand that I'm going to speak in, in probably the, the generic larger population type yep, of terms. Yep, yep. And, that, and that's the difficulty that, that we've got as an industry, we're stigmatised. Yeah. Um, and you should be able to sit down at a dinner party and proudly say, um, I own and operate a brothel, I own and operate an escort agency, because the law recognises um, these um, entities, these businesses. And owning and operating a brothel is the same as selling flowers. Um, if you like, it's a, uh, a customer service obligation that brothel owners have. The demand is out there, the law allows for the service to be provided, so why not get in and provide it? Well, I think one of the big things that probably is slightly different between the florist, uh, the, 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 the florist versus the brothel is that women, especially married women, but most women, are very excited when a man they like goes to the florist and purchases something. Mm. However, if they're going to the brothel and purchasing something, that's probably going to cause a few issues. So well, that's a big well, difference. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, 
we had a man, um, pardon me, die on the job in a brothel um, uh, two weekends so he's not ago. So we're not talking the receptionist here, are we? We're not we? talking the receptionist, <laughs> we're talking a client in the brothel. Wow. And one who was enjoying a sexual service, he died, he dropped dead. Um, he's married, isn't he? He was married and his um, um, wife was um, advised, advised by the police. And, uh, of she, where he was? Of where he was, and she came to collect his car, and she said um, to the owner of the brothel, um, I'm intrigued, I'm interested, can I um, do a tour? And, uh, and he took her through. Now, that's not the first married woman to have gone, or in this case a widow, not the first um, married woman to go um, into a brothel. Uh, those women who um, are delighted by getting flowers given to them um, are similarly delighted in instances to take their husband to a brothel and say, darling, here's a birthday present Who for you. Who are these women? There are scores of them. What do they scores look like? Where are they living? There, Who there, are there they? Are, there are 87 lawful brothels in, um, in Victoria and some 20 lawful escort That's agencies. Lot, That's 100 entities. In a minute, I'll give you another statistic about the number of illegal brothels, which mm. is four times as many. But wow. of those 87 lawful brothels, every one of them has got clients who are women who come and say, can I have a gift voucher for my husband, my boyfriend, my fiance? Um, and there are women too who say, I want to spice up our sex life um, and the facilities that you have here at the brothel are a bit more exciting than our bedroom at oh, home. So we'll come in here so and use your So can we come room. here and use your facilities? Wow. And we are in the business after all, we, the owners of brothels, of hiring rooms the women who work in brothels or the transgender people or the men who work in brothels are not employees of the, of the brothel. The brothel owner is not an employer. He's a bit like a hotel or a motel keeper. Uh, his or her business and, I say his or her, 50% of the owners of lawful brothels in Victoria are women. Um, that's a rather interesting statistic. Um, Tough women? No, no, no. Ex-school teachers, ex-nurses. Um, I had a couple of tough um, teachers and um, there's two of them. They're probably um, the ones doing it. Um, a sheep farmer. One of the women is, was a, a, a sheep farmer. Wow. Um, but these um, um, uh, people who operate the brothels are um, in the business of room hire. So um, the couple who wants to spice up their sex life uh, come and hire... Um, um, a room with uh, mirrors on the ceiling and um, right, right. beds that go up and down and turn mm. around and, um, well, what about, okay, and fancy so, linen. Okay, okay <laughs> sure, because that's not what I'm thinking when I'm going. I'm thinking, I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching the walls. I'm not touching the doorknobs. I'm mm. not touching everything. Well, with all respect to the world, that's nonsense. No, because, I know, but that's because, what I'm thinking. Because the lawful component of the industry is the most highly regulated. Um, the regulation and legislation that governs the operation of the brothel is very tough indeed. And from a health perspective, um, there are requirements in terms of what cleaning agents you use, well, what detergents... Well, we're looking for a sponsor for this. Can you tell me, is there a preferred cleaning agent for brothels? Because that must be some good <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, it's very good uh, cleaning Is there a material. brand? Because I'm going to, as a PR girl, I'm going to them going, you just uh, got I'll, a really good plug I'll tell you in that. a really weird way. I'll tell you that off camera. Um, but, okay. Um, just to say that brothels are uh, clean, they're hygienic, and the absolute insistence Even in the like brothel, the tops of the walls and even stuff Even like, like the tops of the walls, yeah, yeah. The linen the is fan, changed. The fan, underneath the fans, yeah, 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 flapping yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to assure you it is. And, Remote and, controls. And, and let me take you and your viewers on a tour of a brothel and we'll go and have a look. And you can run your finger along the ledges and see what level of dust. Do I have like. to? Well, you can do it um, <laughs> safe in the knowledge or without any fear of discovering <laughs> dust, dirt, or grime. Whoa, I now have mm, chlamydia. Mm. No, and, and you won't okay. find semen stains um, or body fluids. Um, uh, Not even but, if you use one of those cameras, you know, that they do on the hotels when they bust the hotels and you look and there's unidentified bits all over the place. Well, we don't have cameras in rooms of brothels. No, so, I know, um, but there's those cameras that show up unidentified sort of stains that have been well, left, well, you know, well, well, you blood bring, or... You, you, you bring your production team, your camera They don't. We in. can't afford one of those cameras anyway, uh, so it doesn't and, matter. We'll and, never and, know. And bring it into the brothel. Okay. And we'll do the test, but we will pass the test. Um, the safe sex bit, really, really important. Um, uh, 
about the transmission of the disease um, is something the so community hey, yeah, needs to be really fearful of. Um, yeah. But in a lawful brothel, um, sex just doesn't happen unless you're using condoms. Mm. Um, and there's no, in the middle of... Um, there's no, like, the doors are closed. Okay, you know what? I'm not interested in this thing. Yep, that's fine. I'm oh, look, I, I'd be a mug and, um, and your viewers would think I was a mug if I said that doesn't happen. Of course there are instances. Well, it happens out there in bloody nightclubs every weekend, doesn't it? Well, well um, and there'll be instances, I'm sure, where a client will say to a woman, um, if I give you another $100, will you remove the condom? Now, my experience is the majority of the women say, no, the condom stays on, or there's no sex unless the condom is on. And most of the women um, will um, interrupt the service, if that's the suggestion, uh, leave the room and tell the, uh, the management, this person wants sex um, without a condom, that client is put out on the street. We have no tolerance of, mm. uh, of unsafe sex. And what is the procedure? I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a sex worker and I'm in a room and suddenly he gets weird or there's just a, you know, a bad vibe or he's, he physically starts getting, you know, um, you know, doing the wrong thing. What, well, is, the, what is the panic situation? Yeah, well, well panic, panic can be, or, or, or that. Um, How quickly, if I'm in bed with someone and he starts getting weird or, or belting me, where, what am I doing it's a, quickly? It's absolutely immediate. At law, um, the law says that the woman, the man, the transgender person providing the sexual service, uh, while providing the sexual service, must be able to access a security alarm, a security button. Mm. So, and I'm not going to tell you exactly where, but certainly um, where it can be accessed are these security buttons and that alerts immediately the management and the staff of the brothel and any um, untoward situation can be dealt with. Are the women allowed to, I mean, as a rule, as a professional sex worker, as a generic thing, if, is it, you know, am I allowed to say I don't want to sleep with that, that absolutely, particular client? Absolutely, absolutely, and a really important what are the What are the Every reasons client, I must give? Uh, none, because first of, all, don't want to. first of all, you're not an employee of the business, okay. you're an independent self-employed person. No, the term I use is an independent self-employed person. Um, you get to see all of the clients on their arrival before the client sees so you. So I'm like, we're looking on the little yeah, viewing yeah. thing, I, going, I, I, oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, and that bloke lives next door to me, or that's my uncle, or a mate of my brother's. She's that of the ordinary with um, that. I'm not. <laughs> There's my brother. <laughs> prefer not to. Yeah, and and, and that's. Uh, and so, um, the um, sexual service provider says, I'm not going to see that person. And the owner okay. of the brothel can't give any direction to the sex worker and say, no, no, I compel you to do that. You've got to go and see that client. Mm. That's unlawful. That's a criminal offence. And so women aren't directed in those terms. Mm. Do you think it's fair? And I know, obviously, a lot of people are going to think, well, of course, you're just going to put your spin on it. But, I mean, you know, the... the w Hopefully the brothel industry has changed significantly because there's no two ways about it. You know, there, there, there seem to be a lot of, um, you know, sex workers that were drug addicts, that were deeply, you know, that, that, that you know, were damaged women that were, you know, it, well, our presumption is a massive last resort, you know, like things have got really, really bad last mm. resort kind of job, you know, honestly, how it's a prevalent is that in, a, in the legal brothels? It's a presumption that's really flawed. The fact of the matter is women make a choice themselves as to whether they're going to work in a brothel or with an escort agency. Um, we can't, or the owners of brothels or escort agencies, uh, can't advertise for staff, for ancillary staff. We can't run an advertisement in a paper saying, we want a manager or a receptionist or a driver or a bookkeeper or a cleaner Why? for fear we may coerce that person into prostitution. This is one of the areas wow. um, where wow. the legislation has failed. So we're not out there recruiting women to come and work in brothels. The woman who comes to work in a brothel has done so because she has made a lifestyle choice. Now again, I would be foolish if I said to you and your viewers, um, Oh, there are no drug-affected uh, women working mm. in the industry. Of course, there are women who use drugs um, in the uh, in the sex industry, but there are women who use drugs in every uh, walk of life and um, and in every vocation. Uh, the tolerance that owners have of um, 
women uh, who are using um, drugs? Mm. Zero. Uh, if you're going to use drugs, one brothel owner says, don't do it in the premise. But if you want to go out in the street, and that's your call, uh, then off you go. Um, so we say the women who come to work in brothels have made this lifestyle choice. Now let me give you one illustration, and I don't suggest for a moment that this is typical of all of them, but it's the, um, the woman who says, um, uh, I don't want to be, um, I, I want to complete a tertiary education, but I don't want a hex debt at the end of the whole process. Um, I want to be able to choose the hours I work, I want to choose where and when I work, and I want it to be lucrative. The sex industry has appealed to a woman who's going um, through university. Mm. Um, uh, several instances, many, many, many instances. But I think of one um, woman who um, completed a, um, a master's degree at Melbourne University in criminology. She went off to um, work with a multinational company, and today she heads that some multinational companies business in Europe. Surely um, she'd be um, worried though that the, 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 that little sideline job would come back and potentially completely affect her career and her reputation. Because well, um, you know, what a rotten employer that would be. It reminds me, what does Hawke say? Any employer who uh, uh, sacks a work in a day would be a bum. Um, surely we live in an enlightened world where... But we don't, uh, do we? Well, then, then let's um, use your program to uh, yes. loosen a few people up and uh, get a greater degree of tolerance and to do some uh, destigmatization of the industry. But you can understand, I mean, okay, so for, well, I mean, I know one of the things, because you've been in the paper, you know, brothels opening up in, say, Altona or wherever it is that there wasn't previ previously a brothel, that then becomes obviously something that you need to go in and, and sort of lobby with, you know, the community leaders. And, and, and what are your arguments, you know, if, if I'm living in, say, somewhere like Altona, there's no brothel there, and then I find out you and, you know, this brothel owner are about to open up, I don't want that there. What are your arguments to the community or the political leaders that, um, you know, either make that happen or stop it? <clears throat> Well, it's all done. You don't go and open up a brothel like you might open up a florist or a laundromat. It, it's so heavily regulated. Mm. Legislation is really tough. The planning laws that govern where you site a brothel means that it just doesn't happen everywhere, right under every person's nose. Um, if you identify uh, an area, a physical area that meets the planning requirements, um, it needs to be, the, pro pro the proposal needs to be advertised, the community's advised, um, and there's opportunity to object. What do I tell them if they object? I tell them, um, don't worry about it. You don't have to lock up your daughters. I tell them, don't worry about it. It's not run by organised crime. I tell them, don't worry about it. There's not a lot. It's not a haven for tax evaders and um, tax avoiders. I tell them, don't worry. You, there's no risk to the community in terms of the spread of disease. I tell them, don't worry. There's no abuse of the migration program or the trafficking of women into this place. Um, so uh, you can come and go uh, um, as you want your normal lifestyle. Uh, the existence of a brothel is not going to disadvantage you in any way whatsoever. And in fact, in one sense or another, you'll probably be using its facilities before too long. Have you ever paid for sex? Um, yes, I have. <laughs> you don't get any perks at the job? Um, uh, um, <laughs> I don't seek perks from the job. <laughs> right. Are you married? Um, no, I'm not married. No. Um, my any, mother, any sort my, of partner? My mother would say to me, um, what have you been doing today, darling? And I'd say, oh, I've been in three brothels, mummy. And she'd say, oh, darling, isn't that delightful? <laughs> <laughs> but are you not in a relationship because what you do is too hard for the average woman to get their head round? No, 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 on the contrary. Although, you raise an interesting point. Um, um, very good friends of mine... Um, I haven't lost a friend as a result of the work I do. Um, those that have chosen to um, uh, put me on the coat, an old maritime expression uh, where you don't talk to someone. Right. Uh, those few who've chosen to <laughs> put me... Popping you on the coat. I'm putting you on the coat. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> those few that might have put me on the coat, well, they weren't worth having as friends. Mm, that's true, that's mm. true. And your, I know your son, I saw your son at the Adult Industry Awards. He's, he's not, he doesn't work within the, the industry as well? No, he doesn't own a brothel. He doesn't no. work in a brothel. What he's is a, he? He's a solicitor and he has a number of clients who are brothel owners. Um, oh, okay. And he 
he's done some work for um, the uh, sexual service providers who work in brothels too. Do you have a daughter? I don't have a daughter. Um, um, would my, no, well, that's too hypothetical. Well, you know exactly where I'm going with it. If well, you did have, would you be okay if she said, Daddy, I've decided I'm going to go and work in a, in a brothel? Um, because it's a choice that, that an individual makes, um, as a parent uh, with my children, my sons, um, if they sought my own, would, sorry, would I give them advice? Of course I'd give them advice. Would I compel them to take that advice? No. What I say to a daughter of mine in this hypothetical situation, I would um, say, are you really sure that that's what you want to do? Because there are other, a, a lot of other lifestyle choices. No, no, I've made up my mind, she says. She would get no opposition from me. Right, okay. And speaking of which, I mean, it's not all just women that are sex workers or, you know, that, or transgender. I mean, how many gigolos are out there? If I want to get some action from a, of a guy, where am I going? Ah, again. Is Thanks. this on the rise? What a good, what a good prompt. Um, there are not a lot of uh, just male escort agencies. Um, there is one a male brothel where the providers are just men, mm -hmm. but it's really designed for okay. other men. Yeah. The escort. Well, what about? Okay, just on that. Okay. The so escort. Got, well, let me finish. The okay. escort agency um, gets lots of calls about. When I last checked, nearly 30% of their business is a call from a woman who is a businesswoman, but not necessarily a businesswoman, who um, says they are um, uh, visiting Melbourne and they um, want a sexual service. They're staying at a, um, a hotel in Melbourne and this agency will send a boy, a young man, an old man, um, mm. um, someone's offers myself there, say, <laughs> not that I do it. Um, Would you? Um, Oh, in the interests of the business, um, if, if push came to shove. Um, <laughs> for want of a few better words. For want of a few better words. <laughs> and that will allow me to dodge the question and not give you a direct answer. Um, so I won't ask your hourly rate. Uh, and so um, there are women who um, are ringing this um, male escort agency and are saying, um, can I see a boy, please? And, uh, and the answer is yes. But most of the boys are heterosexual who work at the even though they're having even though they're having sex predominantly with the guys. Yes, 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 yes. So sorry, sorry, bisexual, bisexual. Oh, bisexual. bisexual okay, bisexual. that's different. I'll sort of, say, wow, well, they. How dumb! They're, they're bisexual, and so they will have sex with women and um, right. and with um, with men. And you get this unique situation where a brothel owner will be approached by a woman who will say, who will ask, "Have you got any boys?" here in your brothel, no, um, but I'll ring my mate who owns the male escort agency and he'll send a boy around here right. for you. So there's some interreaction like that. Um, in case this is being watched by um, the um, government body who uh, administers brothels, yeah, be I'll make it over. perfectly clear this is not an association. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, okay. Speaking of associations, I wonder... The whole Craig Thompson fiasco yep. with, you know, putting the The old... Fourth Estate drove me mad about that. The, the, who, the who? The, the, for, the, the, the Fourth the Estate? Media. Oh, the media, yes. Mm. Well, this is the thing, like, okay, so that whole thing, yeah, Craig Thompson's been whacking, you know, sex workers on his, you know, on his, the taxpayer's dime. Well, the public record shows that. Yes, I know. So, but... Not on, the, not, on the, not on the taxpayer's dime. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I don't think the taxpayers paid for any one of the alleged sexual services Craig Thompson's had. He charged them all up to the union of which he was the national secretary, the health oh, services right, union. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Okay. And I don't think there was any public funding in there. Okay, sure. But Craig Thompson, mad, you know, bang up for sex workers and brothels. Good or bad for publicity? For brothels? Yeah. Um, Destigmatising brothels is what I'm on about. I'm trying to get into... So did, did that... I want to get into the... into the... Um, onto the speaking market. You and I might do it together. Um, yeah, I want to go totally to Lions Clubs and Apex and, um, and talk to men about business opportunities in brothels. 
I want to go to uh, Melbourne Church of England Girls Grammar School and talk to um, the Year 12 girls. Good luck with that. Not with terms of the recruiting <laughs> of the work in brothels, but in terms of the role of brothel plays um, and its social consequences. But how consequence. would that not be seen as if you're not trying to plant an idea of you, when you grow up, you could be a sex worker? Oh, well, I, I would say from the beginning, I'm not here to plant the idea of you being a sex worker when you grow up. Um, but you were asking me about Craig Thompson. But just in case your future husbands or boyfriends get busted in one, be okay about it. Yeah, uh, no, that no. No, no, no yeah. they're not going to be okay with it. I never am going to be okay. I'm sorry. I'm never going to be okay if I find out my partner recently went, even before we started, recently went to a brothel. It's just, it's that, that's too much. Well, I, I'm not ask. going to get deeply into a psychoanalysis of um, um, whether women who might be experiencing some difficulty in a relationship with their partner where he may, let's, um, for the purpose of this discussion, mm. have what she deems to be excessive demands of her um, mm. wanting her to put out all of the time. <laughs> um, she says, well, if you're that... Um, no, he says, um, well, if you won't do it, I'm going to a brothel. Mm. Is it unrealistic that she might say, yes, off you go, but just do it in a brothel where you're not going to fall in love with that person because the sex worker will give you no opportunity to, to fall in mm. love with them. Mm. The sex worker will, will, will provide a sexual service, but you know, he might be better off, I shouldn't be saying this, but he might be better off just locking himself in the bathroom and masturbating. But if he chooses to go um, to the brothel, is that really a massive impact on the relationship? I, I'd argue no. Okay, I think, that, I think what that boils down to is that, um, you know, that preconceived idea of what he is walking into and the fact that this is he's now having sex with a woman that's had sex with thousands of men. Yep. Um, I don't like, you know, like our genitals as part of a relationship, a very intimate kind of, you know, that's our intimate connection, to know that he's then gone and touched bits with someone that's touching lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bits. Mm. Um, I think that's where that the logic of the, well, the situation uh, yeah, look, gets tough. Without wanting to jump down your throat and say you can. you're being far too pious you can say um, that. and very, very precious sure, and you, you really need to grow up a bit. <laughs> well, you've um, said it now. <laughs> without saying any of those things. Um, it, it, it <laughs> you're is, probably right. It, it isn't anywhere near as bad as you think it is. Um, Maybe not. Um, look, I can't think of analogies, but... Um, if, um, if I catch a fish in commercial terms um, and my um, stained hands are all over it and I unload that fish at the wharf and it's picked up by someone who's perhaps not exercising the best hygiene and it's thrown into an unrefrigerated truck and sent to a fish market <laughs> and it makes its way to your local fish and chip shop where some perhaps not best hygiene practices are in place. Um, and it's a someone, lot of touching. And someone's, it's a lot of touching and someone <laughs> serves you that fish, you're not going to say, this is, smells like bad fish. No, and you're putting it in your mouth. And you're putting it in your mouth. <laughs> and you're gobbling it down. <laughs> and you're going, oh, that was just what I need. That was so nice. It, it's, it's done the job. <laughs> it's totally done the job. I <laughs> love that. So I can't, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of women watching that um, the whole word brothel and the thought that you know their, their partner may have been to one or is going to one it, it strikes a lot of fear and that's just a fact in the instance where I'm, I'm sure the phones must be running hot a bit with um, women ringing up thinking saying I've got this you know bill and it's you know is this for you what has he paid for has my husband be there you know can can you confirm this or storming in is there a lot of that kind of commotion from um, discoveries I'm not going to say that um, brothel owners are sneaky um, but, but they have to protect their clients they, 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 they offer to their clients absolute confidentiality what about if it's a legal issue, like the Craig Tomp Thompson sort of thing? Well, we'll, we'll come to Craig Thompson. We've got plenty of time to talk about him, if that's what you <laughs> hung up about. Um, but if um, I'm to use an automatic telling service or an electronic funds transfer, or to ask for a receipt at many brothels, 
if I go to a brothel um, called, um, let's... Um, the Daily Planet. No, let's say um, Amber's... Um, Den of uh, Dodginess. Den no, of Dodginess. Okay, well, let's call cool um, that. That's funny. Uh, and, and, and I pay... Um, <laughs> Um, three hundred and forty dollars for an hour. For, Be a lot more than that. Um, I'm, uh, 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 thousands. It would be <laughs> through the nose. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Through the nose. Through the nose. <laughs> um, a receipt that I'm that I'm offered uh, or given rather says that Isn't I have. going to say. It, it says I've been to um, Jimmy's Cellar Tuck Bar. Shop. Jimmy's uh, Tuck Shop. Oh, or the Cellar Bar or. Um, um, which I just must tell you one quick story about an escort agency and truck stops. In regional Victoria... You had me at there's both. A, there's a very, very good um, escort agency that um, provides sexual services right across a very large part of regional Victoria. And um, they provide sexual services for interstate truck drivers who are coming down um, main arterials. And the truck driver will use their um, radio in the truck and call the escort agency and say, look, I'm going to be at truck stop such and such on the Midlands Highway in an hour. Can you meet me there with a woman? And I have a half hour requirement to spend time with her. And the escort agency sends a driver and the woman out to truck stop 69 on the Midlands Highway. <laughs> and the woman gets up, gets the money, from the, climbs into the truck, um, collects the money, um, and uh, the truck starts a rocking. And uh, after this is a 30 small minutes, truck or a very heavy very, session. <laughs> and after 30 minutes, the woman clambers down from the truck um, and uh, um, says goodbye to the driver and he continues bringing fresh produce to the market. Um, and she... Um, a lovely of him. She goes home. Oh, it all ends so nicely. And it all ends so nicely. But they haven't fallen in love. No, they, they probably haven't. That, that, um, that doesn't Unless happen. Unless he loves a lady climbing. Um, now, um, let me see if I can remember what your question was. Um, let me see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you hung up about this... Um, hung up about a lot of things, William, so let's narrow this down a bit. This, this oh. one is, um, um, can women uh, catch their husbands? Yes. Boyfriends? Can I ring up and say, you know what, did bloody, what's his face? Was he in there? I've just, you know... I think he was, or, you know, there's some strange, unidentified, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. continuous um, thing popping up on our credit card bill. Um, what are you telling me? What's the standard the, the, line? The, 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 um, the answer is that we respect the confidentiality of the client and we're not going to reveal that. What about if I'm job. coming down there and I ain't leaving until you admit to me that this dude is a regular and I've got the photo and how often are we seeing this and where's your girls? Have you seen this guy? Yeah, well, what do you do when you've got the I'm smelly... I'm a Leo, I'm a persistent. What do you do when you've got the smelly fish and you're saying um, to the fishmonger, um, <laughs> I want a refund and um, he says, I'm not giving you a refund. Um, well, I'll tell you what you have done. You've put me on fish for life. <laughs> oh, that wasn't my intention. <laughs> wasn't I my used intention. to love it. Okay. So, so, yes, the answer is no. Of course, they're the answer, protecting. It's absolute client confidentiality. Okay. Which um, leads me into illegal brothels. Yes. And I said um, uh, earlier to you and your viewers that um, there are some 87 lawful brothels in Victoria and 20 odd escort agencies. So, let's say 100 lawful entities providing sexual services and complying with all of the tough requirements and who are run by uh, business people who have been tested by the government in terms of their probity and in terms of their business management mm -hmm. skills and a very, very tough test indeed before you're given a licence and then these tough regulations that you have to comply with. But if your production crew or you this afternoon want to set up a brothel where you don't bother with the license, where you don't bother with the regulations, where you can be into tax evasion and avoidance, where you can peddle drugs, where you can belt women, where you can circumvent the migration program. I really hope I haven't chosen crew members that are, are going to do that or you, you can, you, you, <laughs> that's their thing. You can walk out into the street here. And, and there could be some house down the road that's and, got and a couple you, of girls and, in and there. And you can rent a shop, um, rent a house, um, put an advertisement 
in um, the uh, local Murdoch uh, paper. Mm. Mm. Um, and it says Vanessa. No, no, it says massage therapy. Vanessa massage therapist. That's right. That's right, and that's a euphemism for uh, illegal brothel that everybody recognises. Right, yep. And um, it's not bloody real massage people just trying to have, just trying to go. You know what? I can only afford and add this big, and suddenly well, they've well, got all these sleaze well, bags well, 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 rocking the, the, up. And, and, and that's right. And the real massage person won't advertise in um, community they're too newspapers. Scared. Because they're getting telephone calls that say, uh, "Is it a good happy ending that you finish with, oh. um, or that I that I'll experience?" Um, mm. um, Not ideal. But you've got 400 mm. of these places in Victoria. Now you've had a government agency, Consumer Affairs Victoria, that have the administration for the prostitute or the Sex Work Act, and in 16 years they brought one person before a court. That's ridiculous. Charge of operating an illegal brothel. That is ridiculous. The police say, or were saying, ah, oh, um, the presence of an illegal brothel is um, um, an offence against planning law, and planning law is administered by local government. So it's up to Love the, that that's their priority. It's Not up the to the fact council. that probably the women that, uh, you know, that is really where the stigma, I'm sure, comes from in terms of the really desperate women and being pushed into it by these revolting people. That's mm. where I'm sure so, they so are. So the coppers have done this nasty little handball mm. of, um, of uh, policing the legal bottles. Um, Send it off to, to the local government, planning, who can take action against the owner of the land, who was never the operator of the illegal brothel. And so councils are successful in closing illegal brothels, but the operator of the illegal brothel is so nomadic, they simply move yeah, next door up down shop the street. Somewhere else. And um, you have in Victoria an initiative, fairly recent initiative, an establishment of a police unit. It's not the old vice squad, thank Christ. Um, but it's a dedicated police unit, the uh, Sex Industry Coordination Unit. Um, and they're charged with looking at um, bringing or stemming the uh, proliferation of illegal brothels. And um, are they proactive? Are they doing, the, doing what they should be doing? Um, no, um, obviously. Um, they can do better. Mm. They can do better. Mm, mm. And until that happens, mm. we've got a crisis in our community. Okay, so you know what? I'm 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 a horny dude. It's Saturday night. I've had a few drinks. I just want to have sex. Ideally, I want to wake up with half a conscience. I.e., I didn't go to one of the the illegal ones. What, how, what am I doing to 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 check that this is not some cowboy versus the Daily Planet or an ah, established? Yeah, yeah. Um, good. Um, the lawful entity. Just one um, small thing in terms of the regulatory requirement. Um, has to display a license that says that um, this is uh, operated by a person who holds a license mm -hmm. to run it. Um, you will see right through the place um, the emphasis on sending the message, selling the message about safe sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you won't find that sort of thing in the illegal brothel. Mm. Um, the distinction um, between the uh, mattress thrown on the floor in the illegal mm. brothel in a shop um, through to the multi-million dollar investment that um, are some of Melbourne's lawful brothels, sharp contrast. Mm, okay, those last couple of pages in magazines, like blokes magazines that look like that, you know, I, I used to work in magazines, that's an expensive size ad with a fancy logo. More likely they're the ones, that, that that's not your dodgy operators. Um, that's sort of, um, you wouldn't put yourself in there if you were the illegal guys? Um, I'm not sure what magazines you're referring to. Um, People magazine, Zoo Weekly, like, you know what, I don't even know for a fact those, but there's, you know, I've seen the ads in And look, I, I'd have to have a look at what the ads um, are. Certainly, mm. uh, brothels advertise in um, magazines that are designed for men to read, but that women read. Yeah, yeah, mm. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We could keep talking and talking and talking. We could, yeah. we could.